Welcome back to more coverage from CES 2012. I'm here with Bill from Sapphire, and next to us we've got a 7970. Yes, I mean, obviously we're pretty excited about this because it's the fastest uh, single GPU graphics card that we've ever introduced. Yeah, to be careful saying it's not the fastest graphics card. Well, no, I mean, uh, yeah, it is though the fastest single core card that we've had and, we're, and it's giving us really good performance and knocking on the door of some of the last generation dual cards, actually. Yeah. Sapphire is obviously a huge AMD partner and we've seen other partners come out with custom designs already. When can we expect to see Sapphire's custom models? Um, well, I'd pick you up a little bit on that for saying custom designs because they're basically just the reference designs with a different cooler slapped on top. Uh, Fair enough. We, we don't really consider that to be a custom design. Um, we'll be coming out with full Sapphire original designs within a month or so and you'll see some changes to the power circuitry and things like that that give us even extra performance. And presumably you're going to see some pretty overclocked models given how high the card goes. Yeah, the car's looking like it's got a lot of headroom to get some extra performance out of it. We're uh, pretty excited about what we're going to be able to do with that. Yeah. And it's sat on your new motherboard. So we've got PCI Express 3 graphics card and PCI 3 Express motherboard. So what are the benefits of doing it that way? Um, well, we, obviously the X79 is one of the first motherboards that we have native support for PCI Express 3 and it just means that you're able to get the maximum performance out of the graphics card. The, these new cards have a much faster memory bandwidth on the card itself and bigger memory arrays. Three gigs is the standard now. Um, so you need to have that for the extra bandwidth, really. So if you put three cards in, say, there's so much bandwidth going through the system that PCI Express 3 is the only way to go, in your opinion? Ultimately, that will be the case. I'm not sure whether we're anywhere near to uh, saturating it yet. Yeah. OK, so when can we expect to see 7950? Have we got a rough idea without breaching any NDAs, obviously? Uh, I think we're looking at early next month. Right. And again, can we see overclock models from you guys from the get-go? Oh, we're working on those already, yeah. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> Let's move along. So we've got more than just graphics cards here. Well, yes. I mean, we had a pretty good reception for something we called the Mini PC. Our Edge HD um, was launched last year. It's a really small format PC. In fact, uh, people say to us, "What is it really a PC or is it just an access point? It's uh, literally that small, just like the size of an external hard drive or something. This new model is based on our AMD Fusion technology. So we have the E450 processor in there, and we're already seeing much better graphics and core performance than we saw with our previous Intel Atom-based models. Do you think this was made for fusion because when you put everything together in a small form factor you've got decent graphics and decent CPU performance and we're kind of surprised that this wasn't launched from the get-go with fusion. Um, yeah I'm inclined to agree with you but actually it's pretty tough to get everything working and squeeze into that smaller format. Um, obviously you've got to hit um, emission regulations, you've got thermals to consider and all those kinds of things so this really is the first point at which we've had everything come together to do that. Right you say it's coming out fairly soon um, when is it and roughly how much will it cost? It's going to be in the same kind of cost regions as our previous models, but the delay has been because of the component shortages in the industry and also manufacturing during Chinese New Year. So we expect to see this during February. Right. We, so we've seen graphics before, we've seen a mini PC before, but just behind you there, you've got something which is new for you, I believe. So we talk have. Um, this is something called the Vid2X. Um, it's basically what you might regard as a video splitter. So. You can take the output from uh, any video source, whether it's a PC or a laptop, or, or it doesn't care really, um, and display it on two screens. So for example, here we're demonstrating with a MacBook, which has got a Thunderbolt output, which is similar to DisplayPort. Um, if you're used to working on a very small screen like this, it's quite a revelation to be able to just plug in a little box and suddenly have the real estate of two full HD screens. Right. And just to recap there, because it's completely external, there's no drivers, no trickery, nothing you've got to do. You literally plug it in and get the wow factor immediately. Uh, you're looking at supporting up to 19 by 12 or 19 by 10 screens two of them from any video source, DisplayPort or DualLink DVI, we have two different models to support the two video sources. But you're right, it's completely agnostic, it doesn't care whether it's coming from Windows, Linux, MacOS, whether it's NVIDIA graphics or ATI graphics, it doesn't care, as long as there's a video signal, it just sees our little box as one big display. And you have a simple choice of whether you want to use that display as a single stretched image or two cloned images. So in some teaching situation for example or displays that shows like this you could have two 
big monitors, each showing the same information, just source from any laptop, and you just plug it straight in, and the information's up on the big screen. Right. And how much is it? 179 bucks locally here. I don't know what that translates to in Europe. And when can we see it? Um, it's just starting to ship now. OK, brilliant. Cheers, Bill. So that's Sapphire's new products for CES 2012. We're off to find some more, so stay tuned for more from Hexus.